popular demand, a Goofy movie. This is a film I actually already talked about a bit. I did a list of the top nostalgia critics I wouldn't review, and one of them was a Goofy movie. I wasn't really sure why so many people wanted me to review this. I will say that, in a sense, I was the exact wrong age to see this when it came out. I think I was just starting to enter high school, and when you're starting to enter high school, you don't want to see a Disney film with Goofy in it. So keep in mind, I didn't grow up with this, I actually saw it years later. But, for what I saw, I didn't think it was that bad. I mean, okay, it's not among one of the best Disney films or anything, but you know what? For what I could have gotten, I was actually kind of pleasantly surprised. The story is Max, now played by a different voice actor, is forced to go on a field trip with his father, Goofy. The only downside is all his friends are going to a concert, and even a possible girlfriend named Roxanne might be there as well. So while on the trip, he's constantly trying to find a way to steer the car towards the concert, instead of on the fishing trip that his father wants to go on. So yeah, kind of a standard story, but what really sets it apart, oddly enough, is the connection between the father and the son. The father just wants to be a part of his son's life, and the son, of course, wants his independence. This could easily be shown through a bunch of throwaway lines, and yeah, they're in there too. But actually, there's a lot of quiet and, dare I even say it, kind of mature moments in this movie. I mean, it never goes too far, it always comes back to the fact that it's a funny cartoon. But for example, look at this opening. Artistically, this is a very nicely laid out movie. And I mean, think about it, you're doing Goof Troop the movie, would you expect any of this to be in it? In fact, it's actually kind of cool to see Disney animate some modern-day technologies. Like, when's the last time you saw a hot tub in a Disney film? And really, they don't take their gloves off even when they go swimming? Cartoons are weird. I will say one of the downsides is that there's very little of Pete's family, and that was always my favorite part of the show. We don't even see the wife, the crazy daughter, or the dog, and I really miss them. They were funny. But to be fair, that's not the movie's focus. It really is supposed to be about the father and son, and they keep it where it should be. The songs I don't remember too well, with the exception of the opening one. I have to admit, it is pretty catchy. The song done by the pop star at the concert is also pretty enjoyable, but mostly for awkward corniness. Scenes like this and even a play down Pauly Shore actually work okay in the movie in the same way that Zach Morris works in Saved by the Bell. Yeah, you know it's not really popular, but you know what? You give it a pass. It's cute. It's energized. The characters are having a lot of fun in it. The romance actually isn't that bad either. The Roxanne character is actually kind of cute and likable, and the two of them actually do share a believable chemistry. Though I don't know, has the shy, stuttering guy in the corner really ever gotten the hot girl? Well, I'll tell you. No, it hasn't! But a Goofy movie is a very fun film. It's bright and colorful, it's got good stuff for kids, and it's got a couple of good things for adults as well. The jokes are pretty clever, the characters are pretty likable. It's no masterpiece, but I think it's definitely worth a look.